here we have a small 3 volt motor. That's the armature with three electromagnets. That's the outer casing with two permanent magnets. That's the end cap with brushes. Those brushes run along that part of the armature which activates those electromagnets in turn. It can never line the magnets up so it's forced to spin. That's one area simple where a super magnet could be very useful that's what it looks like when it's together you can see the brushes contacting the armature ready for a spin you can even see the armature as it spins and the brushes making contact but today we're going to be pushing 24 volts through those wires High voltage causes the motor to spin at super speeds. Apparently the brushes blew out. Let's have a look. Now the armature looks just fine, but one of those brushes looks like it's melted. But why did the brushes burn out? Now we're going to step things up a notch. You'll see why a little bit later in the video. As you can see, we'll try again. I'll hook that up to 12 volts. Feel free to stop and read the video. I'll let you make up your own mind as to what really happened here. But keep watching, it gets more interesting. Now see that in reverse slow motion. Now we'll step it up another notch. You'll see how this is related to electromagnets a little later on. When you record things with high speed and then play back in slow motion, you can get some very interesting results. This time we're going to be taking 24 volts through a Jacob's ladder. Extremely high voltage here. Yeah, that's what it looks like. So be careful. All that does is change the direct current into an alternating current changes the voltage or amps into higher voltage or greater voltage and the voltage is displayed between these two wires you should climb up that ladder safety always comes first now we have taken some precautions because we are dealing with high voltage here so safety equipment is a paramount now as I hook this wire up it should start I'm actually screaming inside right now, but you don't see that part of this video. It was the amps and the battery power that run the other tests, but watch what happens when you use high voltage. Voltage by itself doesn't really create much heat, but it has some very unique properties which are very useful for some particular applications. You'll see why soon. But you do have to make sure everything is well secure and all your equipment, including your hands, is well away from the area. about if I grab a tissue, scrunch it up and put that in there. High 
high voltage is extremely efficient with conductive materials like water, copper, silver or even metal. It, can, it is so efficient that it can even jump. That is why they like to use it in the power lines and simply transform it down to a lower voltage and higher amps for domestic use. Watch as the high voltage and a small amount of amps cause enough heat to ignite the gases within. I actually thought that was quite interesting and graphic especially when you see it in reverse and slow motion. So just sit back and watch this and you'll see exactly what I mean. Now you're probably wondering what that's got to do with an electrical super magnet. But just keep watching and you'll see. Here I have a coil of wire hooked up to a multimeter. Now if I take these rare magnets and pass that over the top or even through, it should register some power. The closer I get, the more power. But what's going to happen when I hook up 24 volts to that electromagnet? Theoretically, it should pull those other magnets closer. We'll see how this one goes. Now why was a small coil more effective? Only when you play that back in slow motion can you see what really happened. Watch what happens next. Watch as it melts off, turns into a wheel and is then repelled by the magnets. So in conclusion, I believe it's not the voltage or the amount of coil that makes a super magnet, it's the amps. You just gotta find a way of stopping the coil from overheating or even melting for that matter. <laughs>